now that we've explored the definition and properties of inverse trig functions, let's take a look at the kinds of expressions that frequently appear in analyses. It's quite common to end up with an inverse sine of a frequently seen triangle. Let's see how that works out here. If you're asked to evaluate exactly an expression like this, you can use your calculator, but that'll give you some potentially long decimal expression that isn't easy to interpret. It's easier to be able to sketch it first, just remembering what the definition of the arc sine is. The arc sine gives us an angle. However, you're more familiar with sine of an angle equals a ratio, so take advantage of that. And recalling that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, you can actually draw a triangle with root 3 on the opposite side and 2 on the hypotenuse, and the angle here being the angle you're looking for. Now there's no way this is always going to work out exactly, but this triangle here should hopefully ring some bells, because this is the half of an equilateral triangle, which is 2, 1, 1, root 3 here, and that's the angle we're looking for, and so that angle is exactly 60 degrees, or in calculus, pi over 3 radians. The key here is recognizing that an arc sine with a ratio is something that you can sketch out. Now what if we do arc cos and we include a negative sign? Well, you can think of the same kind of construction. We're calling that we're looking for the angle, which satisfies cos of theta is minus root 3 over 2, and this is the adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, if we think of our angle here, and think of the adjacent being a negative quantity, all we do is move over to this side and say negative root 3 here with a length of 2. And because this is a triangle, we just imagine them lengths but in this side, then we're talking about this angle here as one possible option. That's our theta. And if we take a look at the geometry here, this is the 60 degree angle, that's the 30. So this part here has to be 150 degrees, or that's pi over 6. We start with pi, so 5 pi over 6 radians. So arc cos of negative root 3 over 2 is equal to 5 pi over 6. Let's get a little more exotic. Here we have the arc secant of 2. Now, the immediate reaction for most people is that secants are less familiar, so, so let's write it out as an angle first to get started. Secant of some angle equals 2, but then quickly, as quickly as possible, turn it into a sine and cosine, remembering that secant is 1 over cosine. And that means that our cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. This gives us a scenario similar to the earlier examples, where we have a triangle that we build and the adjacent is 1 and the opposite is, or the hypotenuse is 2, something like that. And in fact, that's our 1, 2, root 3 triangle. So in here, we would have 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. And so arc secant of 2 is pi over 3. In this example, we have a sequence of trig and then inverse trig. And on the surface, this looks like an ideal sequence. We have an angle to start with in radians. When we take the sine of that, we're going to get a ratio. And then when we do the inverse sine, we're going to get an angle back. And so the temptation is to say, because these are inverses, we're going to get 8 pi over 3 back. Of course, we wouldn't be asking the question if it was that simple. Recall that the range of arc sine, the possible values, that arc sine can give back because of its restrictions is only negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And unfortunately, 8 pi over 3 is outside of that. So how do we deal with this? There are two common approaches. One is using the unit circle. Let's do that first. And on the unit circle, we imagine going around and around and around to 8 pi over 3, counting counterclockwise, that's by convention. And just looking at the fractions, 8 pi over 3 is the same as 6 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Well, that's just 2 pi. That's a full circle. We can ignore that. So we can focus on the 2 pi over 3 element. 
and two pi over three gets us over to here. If we take a look at back at the range of arc sine, how does that play a role here? Well, the thing to keep in mind is that the coordinates here are x and y's, and the x and y's represent cosine of the angle and sine of the angle. So if we look at the y coordinate where we ended up and find a matching point with its own y coordinate, then we're going to be able to identify something in the range of minus pi over two to pi over two, which is essentially these two quadrants, and say this angle, which is gonna give us the same sign value, is what we're looking for. Now here it just takes us a bit of practice looking at the sketches. If we take a look at our arc, and we cut it down the middle here, we have two pi over three. I'm just gonna write two thirds and one third. Well, that means that this is one sixth and one sixth because of the symmetry here. That leaves the angle that we actually want in this diagram here as the full one half pi over two minus one sixth, half minus six is pi over three. Arc sine of sine of eight pi over three is actually equal to pi over three because of the limitation on the inverse sine. But I said there are two ways to do this. The other way to do this is with a graph. If we do a graph of sine, we just have to make sure we include all the way out to eight pi. So breaking this down, here's our two pi. And remember eight pi over three is two pi plus two thirds of a pi. That's a little bit more than another pi over two. So there's eight pi over three. And then we take the point there and we back it off. So it could be this value. This is the same y value. This gives us the same y values. And so does that. Then we use a couple of different symmetries, similar to what we did here. We know that two pi over three is going to give us exactly the same sine value as eight pi over three because it's two pi apart, one full cycle. That's great. But unfortunately, we can only use points that are between pi over two and the origin. So we know we're gonna to need to find our way back to this point. We can do the same kind of logic we did here. This is pi over two, this is two pi over three. The difference is pi over six. We know our point that we care about is gonna be symmetric. So it's gonna be pi over six on this side. And then what's left over is one pi over three. To get from here to here is pi over two. We went back a step, pi over six. That leaves pi over three at the end and the same answer here. It makes no difference which way you approach these problems, whichever way is more comfortable for you is fine. And with that in mind, we can actually make more generic replacements. This is something that you'll frequently encounter if you imagine moving arms where you've got some ratio that's gonna be conserved, you find the angle, but then you find some related property to the angle. Fortunately, it turns out these are actually fairly simple in practice to work with because we can go right back to a triangle in the general case here. And what we're gonna do is build an arbitrary triangle with an angle theta, recognizing that the cos of something is gonna be an angle. So another way to write this is that sine of that angle equals r, and that equals our opposite over hypotenuse. This doesn't look like a ratio, but the lovely thing about the number one is you can always make a ratio by dividing by one. So if we take this and look for a triangle that opposite the theta has an r length and a hypotenuse of one, this triangle will have an arc sign that gives us r. But then we find the cos of that angle, and cos is just adjacent over hypotenuse. We don't know what that is right away, but we have Pythagoras because this is a right angle triangle. So this r and one we have, let's call this length here, a. a squared plus r squared equals one. So a squared equals one minus r squared. a equals the square root of one minus r squared. Well then cos of theta is what we want, is adjacent over hypotenuse, one minus r squared all over one. We usually just don't write that one anymore. So we can put our final answer that cos of arc sine of r in general is going to be an interesting, not even trig looking relationship 
but square root of 1 minus r squared. And we can change this up. Let's take x as our input as the ratio, find the angle, and then take the cos of that angle. Again, we're going to define that as theta. Draw an arbitrary triangle here. And our tan is equal to x, which is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now this time, we can still do our one trick in the denominator. So we define our angle, we define the opposite as x, the adjacent as 1, and then we ask what cos of theta equals. Well, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. We don't have the hypotenuse yet, but we can find it through Pythagoras. We take our 1 squared plus, let's give it a name, let's call it b this time, 1 squared plus x squared equals b squared, and so that's it, we want b b is going to equal the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, we have our hypotenuse. The adjacent is just 1. So we're going to have 1 over 1 plus x squared, all square rooted. But that's exactly what we started with. So the cos of arctan of x, we can eliminate the trig and inverse trig functions completely out of that and get this relationship of 1 over 1 plus x squared, all square rooted.